The invisible mannequin technique is considered one of the most boring retouching jobs in the industry, and for a reason. It's extremely repetitive. For every item you have to do the same things over and over. You isolate the front side of the garment, then you use other pieces of the same garment, like the back side, and combine them into one. Then you align the image up to some guidelines, and that's it. Sometimes you don't even have to do any actual combination. If the mannequin is modular, the neck can be removed to save you time on retouching. Just isolate and align, and you're fine. But that's not what this video is about. It's about the neck joint work, about the process of combining two or more images into one ghost mannequin image, where the garment is floating in the air and no one seems to wear it despite all the volume. As the process of combination is pretty much the same all the time, there's absolutely no reason to do it manually. That's why I've got this mannequin action set and the backside insertion action. I'm going to show you how to use it to speed up the backside insertion process. What you need is two images open in Photoshop. The first image has to be the front side and the second image has to be the back side. It doesn't have to be just two images, you can open 20 or more, it's just the order that is important. Every front side comes first, and there's a back side after each front side, because the action is using the next document and previous document commands to move between images. The front side image has to be isolated on white, and the background has to be selected. The backside has to be selected too, not the whole image, but the part that will be visible from under the front side. When you have both conditions fulfilled, go to the front side image and run the action. It will insert the backside in the neck opening, aligning it with the top of the garment so that you don't have to move it around. You get a free transform prompt and you need to adjust the backside piece to make it fit the neck opening. Press Enter and it will drop a shadow to make it look more natural. That's it. After that, you can align the image and resize it and do anything else. Sometimes you have to insert a bigger backside piece, not just a fragment of the neckline. But it doesn't matter. The process is exactly the same. Select the background on the front piece. Select the backside piece. Go to the front side image and run the action. Adjust the backside as you see fit. You can warp it, you can erase some parts of it, you can liquefy it. The action leaves you with a three layered image. The top layer is the front side. It drops a shadow on the middle layer, which is the backside. The background layer is filled with white. After you've finished, flatten the image and that's it. If your initial selection around the object is wrong, if it doesn't quite reach the garment, you might encounter a weird effect when you insert a backside piece. At least, I've had this effect reported by some of the retouchers who used the action. I couldn't quite recreate this effect while retouching, so I'll just contract the selection by 4 pixels to make this white rim around appear. Despite the fact that the action deals with the potential white rim by using the Select and Mask feature, if this white outline is really thick, it will be visible in the end. To get rid of it, switch to the layer with the front side and use the History brush on the neckline and the white outline will just disappear. But making sure your selection fits the mannequin well before running the action would be a better approach.